<clears throat> okay, hey guys, um, welcome back to school after your really long weekend. So the plan for this week is uh, just ran up some stairs. Okay, um, we, we are finishing chapter twenty three, or this is actually kind of just the the, uh, the second part of what would normally be the first week of the chapter. And next week we will finish it. So we're gonna do a lot of spot translating this week, and my idea for this week was that I haven't totally made up my mind for 2.5, but I think I'm gonna not give y'all homework. But instead of just doing spot translating, where I sometimes end up doing a lot of heavy lifting, I'm gonna have you guys really focus on vocabulary. And so I am passing out refresher sheets. So computer kids, if I didn't already give it to you, you should go get a, ref like a vocab refresher sheet unless you have a very dedicated and purposeful like vocab diary or journal or something like that, as well as what says uh, chapter, it just says chapter 13. I don't know why I titled it that way, but this is the reading. This is like the story for this week. And so we'll go over that. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll do that today and tomorrow and presumably play Jeopardy on Thursday. And you guys will take a vocab quiz on, uh, let's see, when is that? On Friday. Where is that, rather? Haven't you already taken this vocab quiz? So y'all have, right? So that might just be history. Plus, how about drilling participles? That sounds good. We'll put that in Jeopardy and we'll do it on Friday, too. All right. Uh, there's a couple lectiones. I can't. I guess we've done. I think all the lectiones, but we must have skipped this one or something. This was not one of the ones you guys did for homework, uh, but it's a pretty good one. It's just kind of long, so maybe I didn't ask you to do it. But those sunt modi kerti ac fines in rebus ultra quos numquam possumus essa filiques filiques probably rather yeah. This is number six on the lectiones from last week, which is something you should still have. Um, kind of weirded out that I, how long have we been on this chapter? Sorry, I'm like, uh, I'm also coming off of the long weekend. So you guys are out of step with 1.5, right? That's true. Oh, uh, so y'all are taking the translation quiz um, on Friday. Okay. Uh, so I'll review all of the lectiones because those are the ones I'm pulling them from. Because, um, yeah, I'm trying to give y'all lectiones closer to the quizzes. So I'm, I'm like, realizing, like, why did I give that to y'all last week if we're just going to um, we're gonna do it now? Because I know you guys sometimes lose those. But uh, anyway, I um, should gather my thoughts more before I do a video. Okay, so but th maybe this one right here, this one's a little long, but maybe it would be on the quiz this week. But anyway, when we see suit as the first word, um, what could we be thinking in terms of like, say we are ancient Romans and we're not like pecking around for a certain verb that we want to use to like, to kind of get our sentence going and soon clearly isn't the subject. What's a way we could start the sentence off just knowing that soon is the first word. I can't think of anything that's okay. You might be thinking like they are, that is correct. Like they are, would be fine. But then we see the next word, something about modus, um, where do I have modus? Uh, modus uh, modi, and it's 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 a certain modus. So modus we can translate as measure, limit, or method. But anyway, let me separate these out oh, before I spoil the whole thing. Um, uh, modus can be translated as limit, but let's not translate it as limit because I see fines is right next to it, and fines is is kind of more often limit. But anyway, the thing I was trying to build up to is that we can translate suit if it's the first word uh, as like there are. And we call this an expletive construction. So I guess that is the thing that spoils it. Um, so we can start out with there are certain measures and even limits. Remember, och and otque are really just our new versions of and. They're really not too different than and. There are certain measures and even limits in things. So that's pretty straightforward, right? Race, uh, rei is going to be like things or affair or matter here things probably sounds fine ultra and 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 again maybe not again i just kind of i mentioned it but i want you guys to be right like if you're if you were unsure what modus meant 
uh, that is something you should write down. I'm going to ask you guys to turn these in. So this is your homework replacement. I should put that on your schedule for the week that I want you guys to turn in your vocab refresher sheet on Thursday. Hopefully I can give it back to you guys on the same day because the idea is that you make it and it's, it's, it's helpful for homework as well as maybe studying for a quiz. Um, yeah, I know you guys can look up any word you need to when you're doing your homework, but if you have words that have been like showing up a lot that you still don't know, then you can just like have this out and it might make the homework process a little quicker now that there is homework this week. So ultra is beyond. So there are certain measures and even limits and things beyond. And then we see quos, which is an accusative uh, of qui quai quad. And so in this case, let's say beyond which. Um, I think we want to use which. That would be weird. Beyond that, uh, th that might not be clear to you until we translate the rest of it. But once we translate the rest, beyond which is, is kind of clearly the way we go uh, or should go. Numquam is never. Uh, and then posumus, person and number, it is first plural. So beyond which we can be essa felices, which is like happy or lucky. That's another vocab word. I know there's a limited space on the screen, but there's that. And then we, and the, again, I, th I think because we've been on this chapter for like a, uh, for like the week and the ha week and a half since we had that weird three day week last week, I can't remember what we did. But this one here is like seeking sweets alone in the world. We've lacked faith and even honesty. Not a fan of this sentence, but it might be worth noting that patentes here is present active. So I would not choose this one for the lectiones. I'll show you guys the first five lectiones again tomorrow, uh, so that. Um, we can just review those and those can be fr fresh, but I don't really like this one. But Petro Petra is showing up a lot. It's a new vocab word this chapter. And so here would just be seeking. I don't like this one because I feel like there's weird, these two clauses feel disconnected. Like wouldn't this be better if it was we will lack faith? But so this is another vocab opportunity potentially. Correo Correri is a second conjugation word meaning to lack. And it often takes ablatives of um separation right we lack things they're separate from us so that's ablative separation uh and so there's no preposition there and we don't really need a preposition this is one of those where it's just um you know it's, it, it feels like it's the direct object but they're technically ablative it's because they're ablative of separation but yeah you need to know correo it always takes an ablative of separation all right, and then there's this one, which uh, if we didn't see it in the lectiones, it's, it, it basically is another version of what we see in the Laocoon story. Um, whatever is in that horse, I fear Greeks, verbing, present active, carrying gifts. Yeah, we must have done, maybe not. I think when you see this in the story, that's when they use that weird new verb, pharaoh. Uh, but here it's just gero, gerera, um, which is... Um, Carry, bear, uh, or wage. Another vocab opportunity. Feel free to pause at any time. Uh, our story for this week is Cicero. Very, very lightly adapted Cicero, meaning that uh, this is like almost, you know, straight verbatim Cicero. And because it is that way, it has very lightly been edited a, a bit to make it to where there's not too too much glossed words for us but there is still quite a bit of glossed words um because it is straight cicero nearly nearly uh, a couple tweaks here and there it, it's it's quite difficult so i don't know if we've actually talked about cicero this year but he always comes up he's born six years before julius caesar his cognomen meaning his like the third part of his name is chickpea we call him chickpea and he was a rhetorician meaning he knew how to do public speaking really well um he's coming of age during this thing called the uh social war where rome is feuding with other parts of italy that weren't actually all kind of unified at this point um yeah he served in this war i kind of forget that uh he goes on to become a lawyer he then becomes a politician um he isn't he kind of thought of to be the equivalent of this uh well-known Roman orator from hundreds of years before the Roman Republic, which is Demosthenes, 
And yeah, all around we just like uh, we like Cicero. He eventually gets exiled. Uh, you guys remember his whole Catiline episode, where he prevents Catiline from burning down all of Rome, and it's like his big heroic moment. But he is a little hasty in pushing through with the execution of some of Catiline's buddies, and it comes back to bite him years later. He actually gets exiled for it. Uh, he eventually comes back though. He clashes with. Caesar, he uh, sides with Pompey. Pompey dies, obviously. Caesar pardons him, and then Cicero is not involved in the um, Ides of March plot. Uh, Ides of March plot. And eventually, he is unfortunately killed by Mark Anthony because Mark Anthony is horrible. All right, so let's see how this story. I remember it being hard for my ninth graders, but when I look back, at least this first paragraph, it didn't seem too bad. There's a sentence at the end of this first paragraph that's kind of nutty. But uh, again, since we're, I'm spot translating, and I mean, that's kind of how it always ends up being with these videos, obviously. I can't really call on you guys, unfortunately. I kind of hate it. But uh, um, this it's how it's going to be for the third period kids as well, is that I really want y'all to, to get all of the vocab words out of this. Now you, let's see, I don't know, Kausa we have seen, but when we've seen Kausa before, we've thought of cause or sake. In this case, we're talking about Cicero talking about um, like legal trials. He was a lawyer for a long time. And so we're going to translate his case. I don't know if you need to write that down, but sir, in, Neither sergo sergo sergra. Uh, these are glossed words that are on the, the bottom of the page. But anyway, there's other words that we will come across that you should write down if you don't know them. So now he or she rises. Oh, who rises? The great orator, right? Now the great orator or the speaker rises. Casum dictoris. Uh, what's that dictoris going to be? Hopefully you are aware that it's coming from um what's it coming from guys i already highlighted the part of it that's important but that is deco decora to speak right and i highlighted the ur for a reason it looks like it's agreeing case number uh her case number and gender with orator like a masculine orator but uh what kind of participle does this make it that would be a future active so and again calcium here is going to be case so it's about to speak his case See if we can make this purple. This is the last set of slides we will ever look at that have this weird color scheme that's a little different than our normal one. And then uh, anyway, then if you start chapter 24, it'll it'll be different. Um, so about to, right? That's how we translate the future active as about to. Um, she's the other version of the chart as opposed to this one. Um, yeah, this one's better. But yeah, guys, just to be clear, I was being very confusing when I first started the video, but let's go at, we are going to do the translation quiz this week, if that wasn't clear, and then we'll start chapter 24 next week, and we'll have just enough time before Thanksgiving break to mess around with 24. Um, when we come back from Thanksgiving, we might do even more 24, because it's, um, it kind of builds on stuff this chapter, but uh, we'll see how it goes. We might be able to move on to 25 before Christmas. All right, about to plead. Let's make that purple too. I promise I'm not going to spend this whole video making things purple like I sometimes do. All right, about to plead his case. Um, and then this next sentence isn't really too bad. Um, Subcellus means benches. And so omnis locus is going to be like every place. If I said all places, it would feel like locus is plural, which is not. So how about every place? in or on the benches and then occupator you might have already seen it because i clicked ahead on accident but what voice is occupator is it active or passive exactly it is passive so it's going to be like every place on the benches instead of in is occupied just good old present passive so there's is verb all right plenum est tribunal uh, plenum we should know is full but tribunal is um a raised platform for magistrates, their chairs, apparently. So we'll, we'll just call it the tribunal. We don't really need to translate it. So the tribunal is full, or full is the tribunal. Um, judges, is it just judges, or maybe all judges, Ilias. Hmm. Hmm. So how about our subject is Eudike's Omnia, all judges. Not sure what to do with Ilias 
or Verba for that matter yet, but I see Audire Cupientes. Now Cupientes makes me think that might be a, what kind of participle, anyone? How about, so there's its verb, uh, to, well, no, that's, that's for a gloss word. But, or yeah, there's, there's the verb cupio cupire to wish. And with the NT there, that would make it, let's go ahead and bold that. Hopefully you guys already have thought of it in your head. But it's, it's present active, so it's me like wishing. So all judges wishing to what? Audire, what's that gonna be? So, cause, cause this takes a complementary infinitive most of the time. Right. Um, wishing to here, right? Um, why did I do that part first? Um, let's see. So all of this is basically a participial phrase, which is kind of worth noting. I wouldn't know that completely. It looks like I was skipping that for some reason in my initial translation of this. Because we just look, so this is the subject, all judges, and here's the actual verb, which is glossed for us. Uh, it means to like signal for basically. And this is glot, they just tell us this means signals for silence. Like what's going on here? We have a present active participle. So all judges wishing to hear the words, right? Verba is how we're gonna do that, of that man. Um, that's gonna be our participial phrase right there. It's kind of set off, but in, it, it's, it's, it doesn't feel set off, right? There's no comma setting us, it off. So that is pretty tricky. Um, but that's the thing with present active participles is that they will often have their own direct object, but it's not gonna be the same direct object as the main sentence. Um, we boil the sentence down. It is like the way I treated it initially. It's just you decays. It's technically all judges um, signal or silence. Like that's the main sentence. And then just in the middle of it, they cram in this present active participial phrase, um, wishing to hear the words of that. Yeah. Um, that one's backwards. But yeah, so that's kind of tricky. And if it feels tricky, it's probably less because you're having difficulty with it in a normal way that you you might commonly have trouble with Latin, um, in the way you might have trouble with Latin, and more because uh, this is just Cicero's style. And it, it takes a little, uh, it, it takes, I'd say, a handful more uh, chapters to kind of get used to this very authentic Latin style. So oculi omnium ad ilum vertuntur, uh, verto is a new verb this chapter, I believe. Uh, so th like, this might be vocab for you guys, but most of this is pretty easy, actually. Oculi omnium is going to be what? Anyone? The eyes of all? Because this omnium here is genitive. The eyes of all. And what voice and tense is this? Yeah, exactly, it's present active. So it's the eyes of all are turned, present passive, are turned to or toward that man. Um, good, pretty straightforward vocab. To multi admirationes, multi laudes. Uh, this is weird because what are we lacking? I'm seeing an adverb like then, an adjective going with a noun. They gloss that for us, correct? Yeah, they do. So this is just like applause. See another adjective, and then I see another noun. So what are we missing? I'm missing a verb, right? This almost looks like lauda laudare, but lauda laudare, the first conjugation, it would never have that e s unless it was subjunctive. But you guys won't have the subjunctive until chapter twenty-eight, and they don't gloss that for it. Nope. Oh, and they, I guess they even tell us in the note we're going to supply soon. So in sentences like that, where you're like, wait, what? There's no verb. Uh, assume essay or whatever form of assume essay is going to agree with the subject in terms of person and number, that can just be kind of implied. It's like the default verb of Latin. Uh, and so I'm saying implied expletive construction, kind of like the first lectiones we looked at. So there is uh, then much applause, much praise. So that's all that's going on there. But yeah, you might not know that it's, it's that simple if um, you're not kind of used to some of the quirks of an authentic Roman orator style. What's that box down there? All right, this, uh, I don't think there's anything here except maybe a vocab refresh for people who don't know Tongo Tongros to touch. So the orator, case of animo, should be clear. The orator 
touches, right? Touches the spirit uh, of the crowd. So that, if anything, did they gloss that for us? No, they don't. But that's something you can maybe guess. But do we? I don't think we have that word, do we? You have auditor for author, but audience. Huh. If we have that word, I'm just totally blanking out. But anyway, it is genitive there. I can't even think of what the nominative is, though. I don't know. Um, anyway, all right. Uh, who knows? I will find out. Um, Okay. Um, when or where okay this is the sentence that's really a doozy i am gonna have to look that up uh guys if, if you're watching the video and it seems like an okay time to do this you should stop me and say mr calamello do we have this word because otherwise like oh no, no. For a second, I was like, is it a participle from audio audire? I don't think it is. It's not agreeing with spirits. It would need to be accused of plural. Oh, oh, oh. Weird. So, like, it is audience, basically, but literally, sorry that took so long. And I think I'm right. I'm telling you guys, it's five day weekends. Of, of the listening. So we haven't really used participles like this. We've mostly used them as like kind of like adjectives, like the running man. Um, but here we're treating it very much as a noun. And so participles can do that. They can be verbal adjectives or verbal nouns. Like instead of the running man, like I follow the, the running. You would never say that, but meaning like I'm following the people who are running. We would never say that. Uh, runners, we would just say runners. But uh, so bad example. But yeah, this looks to be a present active participle. So it's almost like we're able to form a noun that we don't have, like listeners or audience, by just taking the verb version of that to listen and making it present active and treating it like a noun because it's not agreeing with anything here, right? If it was the listening spirits, a that sounds kind of weird. B, it would be, it would have to have this ES ending. Cause that would, if you remember present active is third declension. And so even though animus is second, it just needs to be accused of plural, which it's not here. It's, it's actually genitive. It's that weird um, genitive. So I can turn it pink. These are for, can I? Yeah, I think that's our normal pink, I think. This is the last set of slides from the beginning of this year uh, where I use this for the ninth graders. And for some reason, for a little while, they had a weird PowerPoint that had a totally different color scheme. Uh, and it got really bad, so I had to start a new one. And that's what we'll get to next week. But um, we have these weird muted colors for a little while longer. OK, that is weird. All right. I need to update the ninth graders. I think we just glossed over that. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's audience. Yeah, obviously. OK, anyway, this is a truly weird sentence. Uh, when he wishes, because we just saw cupio cupire, right? When he wishes, eos, I think we can just like kind of hopefully remember that that's a plural third person personal pronoun. So it starts with a TH, maybe them. When he wishes them, um, and then what? We have metu out misericordia, moveri. So I'm just going to tell you, moveri is a passive infinitive. And that I should be a giveaway, like movera. Uh, well for, uh, must be, is it second conjugation? It's either second or, f oh, it's second. So moveri. Uh, so, you know, the active, like to move would be moveri, um, but this is passive and all that uh, in terms of being formed differently, it's, it's just going to get a long eye at the end. So when he wishes them to be moved, uh, so remember, wish takes, uh, an infinitive, a component like he wishes to verb, but it also can take a direct object at the same time. So eos is the direct object, but it's it's like basically wishes is taking direct object and a passive. So when he wishes them to be moved by either fear or, and they gloss this for us as pity. I think a lot of you guys don't know metis. 
a two, it's a weird fourth sequential. Maybe, maybe you do. We just got it in chapter 20. So. Um, but there it is. Uh, so when he wishes them to, or desires them to, desires or wishes is fine. Let's correct our colors from the weird muted colors we had. Um, by fear. And so that might be kind of tricky for you guys. We don't have any Latin stand in for what we're translating as a by, but that's because with a passive verb, we are often going to have a ablative of. These are not people, so it's not agent, but means, okay? Um, so by fear or by mercy. And this thing about by fear or mercy. Oppressi. We have actually seen that in the Laocoon story, right? But this is my actual verb, whereas oppressi, any guesses? Is it one of these guys? That is actually going to be a perfect passive participle. So, like, by fear or mercy, having been suppressed is weird here. Uh, so, if you look at that word dictionary entry, it can also be overwhelmed. Having been overwhelmed, and then we have our actual verb. So, having been overwhelmed is just a participle which we might just translate as overwhelmed, they are scared, right? So that is a present passive verb. They are terrified. So we can even just skip, because like if we're just going along, we might not know what to do with metu out misericordia oppressi yet, but if we look at Torentor and we're like, oh, it's just present active, tereo tereri, tereo tereri is to uh, scare. So this is like, they are scared. Um, which we've been using, uh, uh, what have we been using for that? Um, Timo? Wait, Timoris is fear. We got the word for to be fearful. I can't think of it right now. All right. It's crazy how, much, how quickly you get rusty. Uh, you're a Latin teacher. Um, and then maybe after we say um, they are terrified, by fear or mercy because we want our again these are ablatives of means and we want them to kind of function with our passive verb that's kind of how we know in the first place to even translate them with the preposition by um in the latin because otherwise um i mean we, we have a pattern set up with when they're appearing for the first time but if that hadn't been there you wouldn't know that we were going to use by until you're like oh well, we got a passive verb so they're verbed by these ablatives and that's what's going on there um yep and then so you can just kind of put overwhelmed I'm, I'm saying having been overwhelmed but we can just say they're terrified by fear or mercy comma overwhelmed and then out flanked they gloss at forest fleo flera is to um or, uh, yeah to weep or they cry so actually the sentence isn't too bad i like empathize with thinking a sentence is much more harder when i first teach it and this is the second time I'm teaching it now, so it might seem crazy to you guys, but that's because this is kind of a weird way to learn Latin. Uh, and just so you guys know, I'm saying this very late in the video, but you can always choose to kind of slow this down or say, like, oh, Mr. Kelly was like spot translating this. I enjoy it more when I've actually had time to look at it myself. And you can just kind of pause the video and work on it yourself and come back during essay or do what you need to do. Y'all can always also, also watch at home. Um, uh, because this week we are getting you guys acquainted with Microsoft Teams. If you're not an e-learner, which almost nobody hearing this video is. Okay. And so that's the last, yeah. So you guys will probably, this went weirdly long. You guys will probably have a little extra time though, for sure, to go ahead and look at that second paragraph. And uh, I'm not going to say it's quite homework, because like I said, I want you guys to like, focus on vocabulary. You might want to try to find your lectiones and go over those, like one through five, because that'll be what is on the translation quiz. Uh, if you need to like get it from one of your classmates, like get, like if, if you lost it or something, hopefully you didn't. Uh, but it's gonna be uh, not these, not these. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure. Translation quiz on Friday. It's gonna be um, uh, these. So um, you can go over those. You can look at the second paragraph. Uh, you can hang out for a little while, and thanks again, as always, for being good sports and for helping me remember what I'm actually going to say to the third period because uh, I was kind of stumbling around for a second there. All right, guys, thank you, and good